In this video, I'm back with another 20 awesome upgrades for your LEGO Star Wars minifigures. In case you missed the other couple upgrade videos, the rules are simple, only official LEGO parts, no burning, cutting or drawing on minifigures. That said, let's jump straight into the video. At number 1 we have a Dark Trooper from the Mandalorian series. They are menacing droids with nearly indestructible armor. They first appeared in the Imperial Light Cruiser set back in 2021 and later on in a Dark Trooper attack set. I think it was good move from LEGO to make them in a minifigure form rather than more like a droid, but I wanted to try and see how they might have looked like more like droids using some of their original parts. So let's build. And that's what I came up with. I think it's not perfect and also not super stable, but I feel like the wide shoulders and the chest plate as well as the arms make all the difference. Here's a side by side with the original minifigure. As you can see I tried to make it just slightly taller as we saw them in the show and of course you can kind of pose them around as you wish, but you need to be careful otherwise they might steal your Grogu. Next up we have Princess Leia with her Endor outfit, they actually made several Endor versions of her but I will be using the most recent one and we can do a couple things with her. First one is we can give her a helmet because after all it's a war out there so you better protect your head. And the second one is these legs from the Rivendell Legolas. As you can see they fit this Leia minifigure just about perfectly. Now we are switching to the dark side, namely to Darth Malgus from the Old Republic, who by the way nowadays goes for almost 200 bucks, which is pretty crazy. But anyways, I think by today's standards he should have arm printing and I think I found just what he needs in Frightening Night from series 15. These arms are perfect for Malgus in my opinion and I have to say it was super scary to replace them because I was afraid to break a very expensive torso, but I did it and now I'm not gonna touch them just in case. Now I want to revisit the couple upgrades I did in my last video, first one is this Jedi Eeth Koth, I already gave him new arms and legs, but I also found that this hat from the old Republic Jedi Knight works amazing for him. And the second upgrade I wasn't able to make last time because my Bricklink order was late is to give this blaster to upgrade it on Baron. And now, not gonna lie, I kinda wanna build a small army of them. By the way, if you don't wanna miss my next upgrade video, you should definitely subscribe to my channel. And we are moving on to the next upgrade, Director Krennic from the Rogue One, love that movie by the way. And this minifigure is already great, but I feel like we can improve him a little bit if we give him these legs from the Series 17 Gourmet Chef. Basically it slightly extends his uniform print to the legs. I think also if you want you can use the arms from the same chef minifigure, but I decided to stick only to legs. Now let's switch to bounty hunters because I have a bunch of upgrades for them. Let's start with the most popular one, Boba Fett. I'm using his latest minifigure from the mech and of course I added a cloth shoulder cape from his older variant, but also what you can do is give him a utility belt, I think it looks pretty cool. Next bounty hunter on the list is going to be Aura Singh from the Clone Wars and if you didn't know she also appeared for like one second in the episode 1 during the pod race. Anyway we've only got this minifigure back in 2011 and this was the era of Clone Wars faces. So what you can do to make this minifigure more matching with the modern ones is take this head from series 12 Spooky Girl and also you can use the same trick we did on Boba with physical utility belt. Now she looks much better. Another bounty hunter from the Clone Wars that we've actually got on the same set as Aura Singh is Embo and for him we can replace his shoulder armor to this one as well as add that face mask from Ninjago to make him look even more accurate. I also loved how he was sliding on his hat in the show and also fun fact, hat is by far the most expensive part of this minifigure, selling at around $25 while the complete figure is going for around $30. And the last bounty hunter is going to be IG-11 assassin droid from the Mandalorian again and for him I want to use a different droid body to make him a little bigger as well as change the setup for his hat using a Technic pin and a 1x1 stud. By the way, this new body allows you to attach a thermal detonator to him to reenact the scene where he saves everybody at a cost of his life. Now that we are done with the bounty hunters, let's switch to episode 1 for a second where we saw Naboo pilots and we've actually had a couple minifigure versions of them and I'm going to try to upgrade two of them. First one is this one, I had a dual molded legs as well as red cape because in the movie they are seen in red robes and the second attempt I have with this one and here I'm simply adding a red cape. To be honest I'm not super satisfied with the look on both of them but still I decided to share just in case someone likes it. Let's switch to Jedi now, we have this pretty old Kid Fisto minifigure which can use some legs printing and the perfect legs for that I think would be the same legs that I used for Ethcoth which are from episode 2 Anakin. Next we are going to upgrade some troopers, specifically this pretty rare Wolfpack clone trooper which only came in one set back in 2014 and I think these arms from the Marvel CMF Monica Rambo work perfectly but again you need to be careful. 
because Wolfpack Torso is pretty expensive. Another trooper we are going to upgrade is going to be Hover Tank Pilot from Rogue One, and we'll just use these dual molded black and white arms, which look great on him. Next, we are going to take a crack at Mandalorian Super Commando. I already upgraded their legs before using these, but recently I saw someone use legs from Bad Batch Hunter, and they work much better, I think. Let me know which ones of these two you prefer. Next upgrade we have on the list is for Grand Admiral Thrawn, and actually I have his older version which did not have dual molded legs, so first thing we need to do is add those legs, but as well we can add Golden Regalia to match his Grand Admiral look. Really it's one of those small but super effective upgrades. Another two super simple and I think most of you already know about them, but these dual molded legs we used earlier on Naboo Pilot actually also fit Padme from the new gunship and Captain Antilles from the Tantor boarding. And the final upgrade of today's video is another pretty simple one, a more accurate lightsaber hilt for Darth Maul and his brother Savage. I personally never understood why LEGO didn't use that piece for these characters. And that's it for today's video, let me know which of the upgrades you liked the most, remember to subscribe and like the video, and as always, thank you for watching and see you in the next one.